This YouTube series will cover material that we cover in our Introduction to Astronomy class from a meteorite found in Antarctica from the planet Mars and the search for life, all the way through to supernovas and black holes. Thirteen point seven five billion years ago, an eruption took place in space. Locating that place is impossible because there's everything in the universe is moving relative to everything else. We can't point at the spot where it happened. We don't know really why it happened or how it happened, or even if there was a why or a how. But we know that a trillion galaxies worth of matter erupted into the universe. The universe begins 13.75 billion years ago as some sort of hot. How hot? Super hot. A super hot, super dense sea of matter. I don't mean to be glib when I talk about how hot it is, calling it super hot, but we don't know. We're probably talking about trillions of Kelvin. The universe begins as extremely hot, extremely dense, and it's disorganized matter. It's matter in its base form. It's matter in the form of protons that have a plus charge, electrons that have a minus charge, and neutrons which have no charge. That's it. We're not talking about hydrogen and helium or H2O, water, or carbon dioxide. None of that stuff exists. But one thing's for certain. The heat of this early universe fuels a rapid expansion, a big bang. And as the universe begins to expand outward in all directions, the universe expands. And as we know from our basic physics, when things are allowed to expand, they cool. If you're asking me as we talk about the formation of the solar system and the universe, what the basic physics is, I'll tell you right now. When things are allowed to expand, the energy spreads out over a larger area, things slow down, they cool off. Remember, temperature is a measure of energy. Later, when things are brought together with the force of gravity, things compress and they heat. So when things compress, they heat, sort of like a bike pump, putting air in the tire, you feel, oh, that's hot. When things are allowed to expand, they cool, like opening the top of a can of soda and seeing that little mist in the top there. Things were allowed to expand, the pressure decreases, it cools off. So the same thing is true of the early universe. Things expand and they cool, and the protons and electrons who took no notice of each other earlier start to pay a little more attention to each other. After all, protons and electrons are attracted to each other. So if a proton were to sit here, it's much more massive than an electron, it's not moving as quick, the electron comes flying by, the electron actually goes into orbit around the proton. They're attracted to each other. Before long, the universe starts to organize itself. Electron orbiting a proton, attracted by this electromagnetic force. We call that element number one, hydrogen. Before long, there's enough hydrogen in the universe. Collisions take place, and we end up with particles that have two protons a couple of neutrons for good measure, and a couple of electrons. We call that element number two, helium. So the early universe has produced hydrogen, slammed the hydrogens together to produce helium. Great, we're on our way. We want to be headed for things like carbon, element number six, oxygen, element number eight, nitrogen, element number seven. But we're not going to get there in the early universe. Because 13.75 billion years ago, during this initial expansion, which probably takes, well, what we're talking about here is probably the first million years or so, hydrogen and helium are all that's created in the early universe. By the time the universe is ready to jam a one and a two together to make three lithium or six carbon, things have slowed down enough so that we're left with a situation where those collisions won't take place. These are nuclear processes. And so what we're left with instead are giant clouds of hydrogen and helium. And these clouds of hydrogen and helium will give rise to galaxies. They will hold together and begin to coalesce around a common center. What can you make with hydrogen and helium? Well, not a lot of chemistry, but you can make stars. So early on, gravitationally bound 
balls of hydrogen and helium begin to form, the pressure begins to build inside to the point where a process known as thermonuclear fusion begins to take place, something we'll discuss in a later discussion point. And you get stars. And those stars burn and shine brightly. You can have planets orbiting those stars, though not planets like Earth, because there is no other elements. There is only 100% hydrogen and helium in the early universe. There are none of the elements that we're looking for, like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, silicon, stuff we can use to make terrestrial or Earth-like planets. All we've got are Jovian or Jupiter-like planets. But we're in luck. Because when those big, early, young, powerful stars die, they explode in an event known as a supernova. The Big Bang is the only thing that could even hold a can to a supernova. The Big Bang's bigger, but the supernova's second. When a star goes supernova, it gets incredibly bright. In fact, we'll talk about details of that later. But when a star goes supernova, it mimics what took place at the Big Bang, <clears throat> but doesn't cool off quick enough so that there are collisions of hydrogens and heliums and lithiums and carbons and nitrogens and oxygens and all the other elements in the known universe. All the carbon, the nitrogen, the oxygen, the, you know, everything on the periodic table that we're going to use for life and terrestrial planets is created in these supernova explosions. So if you watch over time the amount of other elements created you will note that 13.75 billion years ago, there is, if we call this the percent other, anything other than hydrogen and helium, 0% other 13.75 billion years ago. But as the universe continues to evolve, as these stars live and die, they explode, they create the other, and they sprinkle it out like so much dust into the universe seeding new systems like ours that would be born 4.6 billion years ago with a little bit more of other. So go back about 10 billion years ago, the universe has been around for a few billion years and you're up to around 1% other. Go back 4.6 billion years ago when our solar system formed, we're up to about 2% other. So the amount of other in the universe is increasing. You might ask, when are we going to get to 3% other? Well, that'll be a little while. It's slowing down because big stars are hard to make. There's not a lot of places in the universe you can make big stars that can go supernova anymore. But the point is, that is the production of this other by supernovas that gives us the raw ingredients to produce a solar system 4.6 billion years ago. A solar system that will be about 98% hydrogen and helium and 2% other. So I'm saying something you've probably heard many times before. Everything around you, everything other than hydrogen and helium, was created in a supernova explosion. All the gold in this ring, all the carbon in our bodies, all the oxygen that I'm breathing came from an exploded star somewhere else. We're all made of stardust.